Hi, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create this fillable form in Word. Now, I'm going to create the fillable sections first for those people who just need to know how to put in the elements that their users can use in each, each cell, such as text, all these little boxes, or a drop down menu. But if you want to see how to create the rest of the form, then keep watching, and after I've explained that, I'll show you how to create the form itself. So now you want to make this into a fillable form so that somebody can actually fill this in electronically what you need to do is to go up to the developer tab here now if you don't have it then just go up to word go to preferences go to ribbon and toolbar go over to customize ribbon scroll down make sure this developer tab is checked and then click save and then your developer tab will appear in your software so if we click on that, we can see a number of different options here. And really, we're talking about this section here. This will give you some fillable boxes. So let's say, for example, you want to put the name of the student here. Then that will be a text box. Just click on it, and it will turn it into a text box where your user can simply type in this box. And it will shut everything else off so they can't interfere with the rest of the form. So in this one, again, we want some text. So we'll just insert the text box here. Now, if at any point you need to delete these text boxes, you just simply click on them and then just press the delete key. And then you can enter in another text box. Now, they've all got these little gray boxes. You can take that shading off if you want by clicking on this icon here, if you want to make it a little bit tidier. But I'm just going to leave them visible for now so we can see what we're doing. So in this box here, we need some more text. However, if we then right click on this text box and we go down to properties, we can actually maximize the amount of text that we can put into those boxes. At the moment, it's unlimited, so they can just continue typing and it'll probably adjust the form, but you can block the amount of characters that you want. And you just simply enter in the amount you want. So let's just say you wanted only 20 characters. You can choose your text format, upper, lower, title, case. I'd just leave that and then just click OK. And in that box, your user will only be able to type 20 characters. In the same way, this one as well, we just want text and again here. Now, with this one here, you can actually use a checkbox. And to do that, you just click in the cell and click on checkbox. And then in this one as well. Now, if you want to center them, you just simply select them, go to table layout and just hit this center align icon here and you can do the same with this one as well. I'll show you how this works at the end because what we've actually got to do is to lock the document to be able to use it properly. So back to the developer tab. In the signed here, there's a number of different options that your user can do. You can give them the option of text, which is just a text box and they can type their name in. They can also add their signature by simply inserting a picture of their signature or they can use their pen tool, their drawing tool up here I just click on that you can see we've got a variety of different pens and they can simply put a scribble at the end it's completely up to them relationship to student again text box and again the date now in this relationship to student if you wanted a combo box which means you can have a drop down menu go to combo box then right click in the combo box and go down to properties and then up here you'll have this drop down item list so you might want to say mother press enter, type in father, press enter, and let's just put other in here. And then you'll need a title for this box. So I normally just select click here and then press enter, but I need that click here to go at the top of our list so that it actually is, creates the title. Once you're happy with that, go down to the drop down and just bookmark it, just call it anything you like, just call it anything you like, and then click OK. Then you can see down at the bottom we've got a click here. So, in order to use this form correctly as it would be for a user, you need to go up and protect it. So in the developer tab, just click protect form. Once you've protected your form, you can see all the other options are greyed out. If I try to click anywhere in my document, you can see I click and it will take me to the first box. My cursor is in this first box here, and then I can type. In these boxes here, you just click inside them, 
and you can see now I've checked that box and if you want to uncheck it you just click twice and it will uncheck it click here boxes you can see double click and you have the options that you entered in here and if you want to take the shading out you can do just click shading protect the form it will work in exactly the same way you can type up here here and you can see you've got these placeholder markers as you click through and again these will work exactly the same and then on the drop downs so with that don't forget to protect the form once you've protected it you can then export it as a PDF file as a Word document and then it can be sent out via email so I'm going to quickly put my title in so I'm going to go to the center text icon here type in my text then for this top one here I'm going to increase the font size here so I'm just going to keep clicking until it changes to the font size I need I'm going to make this bold as well then I'm going to select the bottom text and again increase the size until I'm happy then I'm just going to press the return key a few times probably twice then I'm going to go back over to the align to left tool then go to insert go to table I'm going to select two columns and eight rows then with these I'm just going to select them go to table layout go to the height here and I'm just going to select one centimeter and press OK or enter and you can see I've just widened the height of my rows then I'm going to go over here to the align to center left icon so when I type it'll all line up in the center and to the right then I'm just going to move this center line over to the left to give us more space on the right to create our text and then I'm going to put some text in the top here about the trip itself I'm going to copy and paste it as I'm sure you don't want to see me type and then I'm just going to insert a, a nice line for graphics so go to insert shapes line click and hold down the shift key so you get a perfectly horizontal line then I'm going to go to this icon here make sure it's still selected you can see it's got these green balls on either side and make sure you're on the shape format tab go to this outline tool and go to weight and then I'm going to go down to three and I'm going to make sure it's in the center by keeping it selected going to align align to center and that line is now perfectly lined up to the center then I can begin to put in my text now this section here I'm actually going to leave a space because I don't want it to be the next section to be connected to this top section I've done so I'm going to leave this blank but I'm going to merge these two cells together so select them both by clicking and dragging across the two go to table layout and just go to merge cells then you can continue with your text now you can see I'm beginning to run out of rows so put your cursor at the bottom of the table and then just click insert below and then just click and insert some more rows now there's a few more things we need to do to this before it's finalized you can see here we haven't got a lot of space for people to give details if their child's on medication so just hit the return key a few times and if you don't like the text in the center here because it's up at the top here then you can just simply select this cell go up to the alignment tool and just click to align to the top left in the same way if we want to move some of these lines we can just select the two cells where we want to move the line and then you can move it just that individual line if you want to and we can do the same with this one so just we can get the text all on one line but before I do that I'm just going to select this middle line here and just move it over so that we can get all the text on one line and then I'm going to divide this into four this cell here so go to split cells number of columns I apologize for the noise it's raining and it's hitting the top of my roof my, my skylight um, and then I just want four columns and one row and select OK then in here we can text yes and in here we can text no and we can select those and again we can put them to the align to center 
So at the moment you can see this text is very close to the line above it. If you do have problems like that, you need to correct them. Just select the table, right click, go down to table properties, go down, go up to cell, go up to options, and then on cell margins, uncheck this box here. At the top, just select 0.1 centimeters, and at the bottom, just click OK. Click OK again, and you can see we've got a little bit of extra space between this sentence and that line there. And the same at the top here. Now, you can see everything shifted to the top left. So let's select the table again, and then select this center left icon, and then this one to the top left. Now we can deal with the border lines. So on every table, if you select it and go to table design, this section over here deals with all the border lines, particularly this drop down here. You can see you can select top borders and all borders and outside borders. So if I select no borders, you see all the lines disappear, but it still acts as a table, you just can't see them. If I then select the table again and go to table design and then go down to view grid lines, what this does, it gives you a guide but this is not printable and if you save it as a PDA they won't exist so they're almost like invisible guidelines that appear on your table just so you can see where everything is and then you can put in the appropriate border lines if you choose to do so. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to push everything down a little bit it's just, just a little bit too high on the page there we are and then for the top one I think I'm just going to put in the border lines I want for these top three rows so I'm just going to select those I'm going to go to table design, go to the borders, and I'm going to I'm going to select inside borders. Then I want a border across the top because you can see I've only got the inside borders but no border at the top and the bottom. I try to exclude the borders at the left and right just for taste, nothing more. And I go to bottom border and then top border, make sure they're checked and then deselect and you can see I've got all the borders except for the ones at the side where you can still see there's a dotted line. Then I'm going to leave a space but for this section here I'm actually going to click all borders. So we've got all the borders around that and then go down and select view grid lines. Perfect. At the bottom I'm just going to double click right at the bottom to enter into my headers and footers and then I'm just going to put in a footer text and then double click back into the center of your page and that just means you've got a nice footer at the bottom to complete your form. Now I'll show you how to create the form itself. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.